Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM has offered glimpses of the contents of its new turnaround plan, which includes some form of possible balance sheet assistance from government. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what this could mean. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. ESCOM's turnaround plan has not been formally unveiled, but some components of the plan have been unveiled. That's right. Uh, the chairperson, Jabba Mabuza, uh, gave a bit of an exposition of what's going to be in the plan. And some of it, you know, is just doing business correctly. So bringing down the costs, raising efficiencies, getting the um, operational house in order, which we know is very out of order at the moment with the amount of breakdowns of the plants, the fact that they don't have enough coal, and, uh, you know, we're in the midst of load shedding. So those are some of the obvious things. And then I think there's the, the those are challenging. But the more challenging thing is around the whole staffing component and whether that's going to be a focus at ESCOM and reducing the amount of people in the organization. And then the last unpopular component, which became, became clear, is that they're going to be returning to government for some form of balance sheet support. So that's either going to be in the form of an equity injection, which looks difficult because government doesn't have a lot of money to play with in terms of uh, the, the sort of scale that we're talking about here. Or the other is to transfer some of the debt that's on Eskom's balance sheet currently and put that on directly onto government's balance sheet, which is also a difficult thing. Um, we know that uh, Eskom has 350 billion rand worth of guarantees from uh, the National Treasury, which it has used to raise debt. And the suggestion is that maybe 100 billion rand of that will be transferred into firm debt onto the government balance sheet and taken off. Eskom's very strained balance sheet. Now, uh, this could be important given that we've seen a real surge, not just in the amount of debt, so over 400 billion that Eskom sits with, rising without any uh, intervention to around 600 billion over the next few years, so it's a massive amount of debt. But also just on their interest payments. So in the first half of the year, they spent 45 billion rand paying for interest against around 25 25 billion coming in in the form of cash. So that is a little bit distorted because they had that 20 billion uh, bridging finance that they got in February to allow them to end their financial year in the black. Um, and they got that from domestic banks and they had to pay that back uh, during that, uh, before the end of September, which they did do. So it is a distorted figure, but still it's a huge amount that they're paying in interest um, and it's rising every, every year. Um, and it's going to continue to rise um, uh, if, if they continue to raise debt uh, to finance the activities. And they're using that debt not just to, to do f capital projects, which was the earlier intention, they're now having to use the debt to pay other debt. So it's a really toxic situation uh, and something is going to have to give. Where's the consumer likely to fit into in this equation? Yes, the consumer uh, is going to be drawn on it into this whole uh, mess, I think. Um, we know for many years Eskom has been saying that uh, it's not receiving cost-reflective tariffs. And if you look at the and analyze the applications over the years, I think that you have to have some sympathy for that view. They're not getting a, um, a, the sort of tariff levels uh, that they need to cover their cost of operation. Whether There's always this issue of whether they incur these costs prudently, um, are, are they efficient? But e and, and given the corruption, how much of the, the cents in the kilowatt hour is corruption related? But even if you take some of those, so if you get some level of efficiency, uh, some level of uh, corruption out of the system, which hopefully we are doing now, I think there's still a problem and we have to have an adult discussion. Now that adult discussion is supposed to be taking place in the form of public hearings coming up in January where the national regulator will uh, look at uh, Eskom's tariff application or revenue application, which translates into a tariff application of uh, 15 times 3 over the next three years. There's going to be heavy resistance towards that. But in some ways, the um, to keep the Eskom somewhat sustainable and afloat, it's not going to just require a intervention from the fiscus, which is the taxpayer. It's also going to require some intervention um, or some give from the consumer, which is, you know, the rate payer. Um, that w and ultimately, I think the concern is if those two can't come to the party, will the bondholder have to take a haircut? And that would be 
a very bad signal, um, I think, to send, particularly given that uh, uh, South Africa is wanting to be seen as an investment destination of choice. And if bondholders are forced to take some sort of uh, a haircut in the future, I don't think that will be go, go down too well in capital markets, but just generally around investment sens sentiment in South Africa. Will these measures be enough to address the utilities' lack of sustainability? That's a, I think that's an important question because I think there are these immediate burning platforms around the operational performance, which they have this nine-point plan to try and turn that around, and hopefully that will yield some fruit. Uh, they have this financial recovery plan, but again, it's a burning platform issue, but it doesn't really deal with some of the fundamental challenges Eskom faces to its sustainability. The electricity environment, not only in South Africa, but in the rest of the world, is going through a massive disruption. Eskom's business model is not fit for purpose. These interventions, the nine point plan, the balance sheet support, the tariff increases, are all sort of business as usual type interventions. Unfortunately, we have to get to the point where we accept that Eskom isn't only broke, but it's broken. And we need some form of a sort of dr drastic restructuring of this organization so that it doesn't become a perpetual risk to the South African economy. At the moment, the interventions that we're seeing are really about kicking the can down the road. And I can understand that politically, it, that is quite, it is quite challenging to make the restructuring decisions that need to be made. But politically, too, load shedding is a confidence sapper. It's uh, getting under people's skins. And uh, so we, we have to deal with both these issues, the burning platform issues and the long-term sustainability. But ultimately, it is going to come down to a political decision and political will, and I'm afraid at this stage, uh, that sort of restructuring that I'm talking about is, is not in evidence at all. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.